Hello, and welcome to the program. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. Today, I want to talk to you about knowing the truth. You see, it's the truth that we know that sets us free. See, just the fact that you own a Bible and it's collecting dust on a coffee table or on a bookshelf won't set you free. It's God's truth, His Word planted on the inside of your heart, coming out of your mouth in faith. You putting the Word of God into practice. See, it's the truth that we know and put into practice that makes us free. And it's something that we need to have a, a clear understanding about. Because just, like I said, owning a Bible, a lot of people own a Bible, but is this Word of God planted on the inside of your heart? Do you know this Word? And do you put it into practice? See, that's what I want to talk to you about today. In John 8, 31 and 32, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See, a lot of people like to quote that second part, you shall know the truth, and truth shall make you free, but they forget that there's a cause and effect that Jesus preached. He says in verse 31, if you abide or continue in my word. See, there's the key. We have to continue. We have to daily abide in his word. And if we do, then we prove to be true disciples. And it's the truth that we know and put into practice to walk in and obedient obedient to on a daily basis will make us free. See, it's the truth that we know. And we have to have this clearly implanted in our thinking if we want to be able to be successful, you know, in our daily Christian walk. If we want to be those who are successful in waging spiritual warfare against the enemy. Because if we don't know the truth and we don't put it into practice, then we, we, we uh, risk being putty in the devil's hand. Well, that's not a place we're supposed to be. We're supposed to have this truth, this word of God built up on the inside of us on a daily basis so that we can overcome, so that we can go to the next level of victory, the next level of glory that we're called to. So we're supposed to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from revelation to revelation, precept upon precept, line upon line. We have to have this word of God built up on the inside of us in a daily basis. We have to make sure that we are not being just those who, who uh, hear the word but don't do it. In James, the first chapter of James, it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Because if you just hear the word but never do it, then you're deceiving yourself. You won't be able to be in that place of freedom. True freedom comes from knowing the word, the truth, and putting into practice. And see, this is something that we have to have on a daily basis if we want to be able to be successful. In Hosea 4.6, in Hosea 4.6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law or the word of your God, I also will forget your children. I say, God says, my people, see, not the world, not just anybody. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See, because they don't want to know the truth. But then there's the other side of it. He says, because you have rejected knowledge. It's not that they haven't heard it. It's that when they hear it, they reject it. They don't have the truth built up on the inside of them. There are those, there's those people that just, you know, just appear, you know, in churches and meetings just, you know, to um, uh, make an appearance. Or they say they want the truth, but they don't. Because if they really did, then they wouldn't reject the knowledge of God's word. They wouldn't reject the deeper things of God. They wouldn't reject understanding how to function as a believer who is, who is in the world, but not of it. But so many of those people who don't. Um, uh, want to know the truth of this world and they just give heed to what the devil says well we can't be like that we have to know the truth and when we know it we need to walk in it we need to apply it apply it don't be one who is destroyed for the lack of knowledge no you need to have the knowledge of god's word planted on the inside of you we are to pursue the knowledge of god because knowledge is power but knowledge that that is just you know that is just head knowledge won't do you good no is putting God's word, the knowledge of his word, put into practice in your life on a daily basis. That's how you're going to be made free. When you put your trust in Jesus Christ and when you put your faith in him and then you start walking in obedience to his word, when you start understanding the covenant that you have in his blood, the covenant you have, which is a covenant of faith, because that's the law of the new covenant. See, we're not under the old covenant. Jesus fulfilled the law. He nailed it to the cross. He fulfilled it in his flesh. The 613 laws, he nailed to the tree. So that we wouldn't have to 
you know, be those who had to be um, uh, judged by that because nobody could even remember 613 laws, much less fulfill them. But Jesus did. He was the only one. He fulfilled it. So now this side of the cross, the law of the new covenant is faith. We operate and live by faith. Faith. And a part of that is knowing the truth. And God's word is true. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15 through 19, it says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we're to accurately teach, present this word. It says, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have to give this truth. We have to apply it to our lives. We have to speak it forth to other people. But see, there's so many out there who are preaching false doctrines. So many people who are in bondage. Why? Because they don't take heed to the truth. They just take heed to what everything and ev that everybody's saying, and they never check it out in the Word. Well, if you do that, then you risk being one who is under the curse of false doctrine. We're not going to go there, but in the first chapter of Galatians, it says those who are preaching or receiving any other gospel than what's written in the Word are accursed. It means they're under the curse of false doctrine. Not only one preaching it, but one receiving it. No, we need to build up in the truth. We need to make, make, we need to make sure that we are rightly and accurately preaching, teaching this word, speaking this word, receiving this word. Then it goes on to say, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Philetus are of this sort, who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So we have to depart from iniquity. We have to depart from the lies, from the deception, and cling to the truth. It says that we, we have to shun profane and idle babblings because all they do is they increase to more ungodliness. But notice another thing that I'm a, and Paul t talking to uh, Timothy. Timothy was the, the pastor of the church at Ephesus. And uh, he was dealing with a lot of stuff. There were people bringing in false doctrines into his church. And um, uh, so Paul, you know, named them. See, a lot of people think, oh, you can't name names. Well, we see it in the Bible because we need to know who's spreading this false doctrine so we can, we can stop giving heed to them. See, they have to be exposed. False prophets, false teachers, they have to be exposed. And we can't be um, uh, just swayed by every wind of doctrine. We have to know what the truth is. And then when we know what the truth is, we need to apply it in our lives. He says that their message will spread like cancer. Well, think about in, in um, uh, the natural aspect, in this world, you know, cancer, which is an awful thing, it's like from the pits of the devil. But when cancer, the natural, spreads throughout the body, get, spreads throughout your body, guess what? It's going to kill you. Well, when the cancer or gangrene of false doctrine spreads throughout the body of Christ, it's going, to, it's going to corrupt the church. It's going to kill the church. Because false doctrine is one of the most dangerous things that a believer can give heed to. Because if you're just immersed in the lies, then you won't even recognize the truth. Well, we have to make sure that we recognize the truth. Jesus is the truth. He is the way. He is the life. And he has given this Bible as his written word to us, and we are to be immersed in it. We are to read it, study it, meditate on it, and apply it in our daily lives. Because, again, it's the truth that we know. Like I said, just having a Bible, that's the first step, you get a Bible, but just having it lay on your coffee table collecting dust, that ain't going to help you at all. A lot of people think they can get their Bible and whack the devil over the head. Well, guess what? He's just going to laugh. But when this word of God is planted on the inside of your heart, and it's coming out of your mouth in faith, Guess what? That's going to uh, deal a death blow to the enemy because he he's afraid of the word. He knows there's power in the word. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. We've been given superior weapons, but we need to know how to use them. But a lot of people don't. Why? Because they don't know the truth. And that's why they're not free. But Jesus said, you shall know the truth in John 8, 32. And the truth shall make you free. And then once you know it and walk it, guess what? The devil ain't going to have nothing on you. Well, he'll try, you know, with because that's his modus operandi, to try to, to, to deceive you, to, to see if you'll take his bait. Well, don't do it. You stand firm upon the word of God. Stand firm upon this truth. Because it's this truth that's going to make you free. It's this truth that's going to keep you afloat in all the times of adversity that's out there. And believe me, there's a lot of adversity out there, a lot of things going on. But guess what? You can rejoice. Jesus said he's already overcome the world. And he's planted his joy on the inside of you. But it's up to you because you have free will. 
to choose to walk in it, to choose to cling to this truth, and not just let everything come into your ear gates, eye gates, and just think it's the truth. No, there's a lot of deception out there, because Satan is the god of this world system, and he operates through deception. That's all he knows. Well, we can't be deceived. We have to know what God's word says, and once we know what it says, then we need to put it into practice, because that's our responsibility, to know this truth and to walk in it, to apply it, to be doers of the word. Because, as it says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. It didn't say that faith comes by having once heard. No, we have to hear it, and hear it, and hear it, and then apply it, apply it, apply it. It's a continual thing that we are to do as Christians. And then in 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 15, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. So we have to fulfill our ministry. And you may say, well, I'm, I'm not a pastor or leader behind the pulpit. or you know, Well, guess what? Everybody has a ministry. You may not be in the five-fold ministry. You may not be a pastor or an evangelist. or one of the, But you still have a part to play. Every believer has a part to play. Each one of us are to present the gospel. Each one of us are, are ministers in different ways. So we can't have that excuse. No, we are to preach the word. Be ready in season, out season. Means when you feel like you're in a spiritual mood and when you're not. Because there's people out there looking for answers. And we have the truth. We have God's word that needs to be planted in our hearts. But notice he says that the time will come. And believe me, we're there. It, it, it was there even then. But guess what? We're even more there today. Look around. He said, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desire, because they have itching ears. See, people just want you to tell them what tickles their ears. Well, in this ministry, I'm not uh, a man who's going to tickle your ears. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. Because the truth is what you need to know. Just telling you something that's going to um, uh, tickle your fancy is not going to help you. We have to speak the truth. We have to stand up and be counted as bold Christians. Those who don't compromise. Those who speak this word. Those who preach the gospel. And once we are preaching the gospel, as it says in Mark 16, then we won't have to look for signs. Signs and wonders will follow us. It will confirm that we're preaching this word. When healing is taking place, when deliverance is taking place, when demons are cast out, people are being set free, saved, delivered, healed, set free, and walking in victory. It says, it says they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they turn their ears away from the truth. That's why they're not free, because they don't know the truth. They turn their ears away from it. They're destroyed for lack of knowledge. We can't afford to be destroyed for lack of knowledge. We have to know the knowledge. Like I said, knowledge is power, but we have to put that knowledge into practice, not just Keeping up a bunch of head knowledge. No, we have to start walking in the knowledge. I'm talking about the knowledge of God's word. I'm not talking about things out in the world. I'm talking about God's word, his kingdom. It says they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. And that's what's happening. People are, are giving in to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons, as it says in another place in Timothy. Well, we can't be like that. We have to stand firm upon the faith, steadfast in the faith, not being moved by every wind of doctrine, but standing firm upon the covenant that we have in Jesus Christ. And once we know this truth, guess what? That's how we're going to be made free. When we know it and we walk in it, we apply it. We put it into practice. Not just hearing a bunch of teachings and sermons and think, oh, that was a nice teaching. That was a nice sermon. And then forget about it. No, we have to put it into our ear gates, our eye gates. Get it planted on the inside of our heart. We have to build the layers of God's truth on the inside of us daily. We have to be like a sponge that absorbs all this teaching. And then we speak it forth. We apply it. That's how we're going to be made free. That's how bondages and addictions and all these things that the enemy is throwing against you. That's how, that's how those things are going to be pulled down. That's how strongholds are going to be pulled down. That's how burdens and yokes of bondage will be destroyed because of the anointing of God's present and we're walking in it. That truth is going to make us free. It's that simple. In uh, John 17, 17, John 17, 17, Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth your word is truth. Think about it. Your word is truth. God is the word. Jesus is God. But think about it. When he was talking about the Father, 
sanctify them then by your truth your word is true and Jesus he's the living word I said the Bible is the written word to us this word of God as it says in Hebrews 4 12 is sharper than any natural two-edged sword it goes forth and it penetrate, penetrates deep and discerns the intentions and thoughts of the heart that's how powerful this word of God is and guess what when it's implanted on the inside of you when you know it and nobody will, will shake you off of it guess what there ain't nothing you can accomplish there ain't no mountain too high to overcome because you can do it the Bible says we're overcomers in fact in, in um, uh, 1 John 5 4 it says this is the victory that overcomes the world our faith your faith my faith has in it the victory to overcome the world faith in Jesus Christ faith in his blood faith in what he's already accomplished on the cross and what he continues to do in our lives so we have to have this word planted on the inside of us we have to discipline ourselves to speak this word to live this word to not be um, uh, distracted from the things of this world no we have to disconnect from the world and focus on God focus on his word which is the truth and start walking in it every day not just when you feel like in a spiritual but not just when you go to a church on Sundays or midweek or just no every day because that's who we are as Christians this is not something that's once or twice a week no this is a 24 7 365 day a year relationship add another day for leap year so we have to have that understanding and then in Psalms 119, 160, it says, The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. It says the entirety of God's word is truth, not just portions of it. No, this whole word is truth. So it would, it would benefit you if you get into this word, dig into the word. Get it planted in your ear gates, your eye gates. Get it into your heart. And when things start coming around you that are negative, guess what? You have you have ammunition to combat those things. Because the devil, he'll sit on your shelf. Yeah, he'll try to come and see if you'll take his bait. Well, when you have the truth on the inside of you and you speak it out loud, guess what? The devil has to flee. Now, he doesn't understand your thoughts. Don't just keep it on inside. No, you start speaking. Just like when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, guess what? When, when Satan came at him with, with, with his mess, guess what? Jesus didn't just sit there and take it. No, he talked back to the devil. He said, it is written. It is written. He quoted the word of God. Well, we, we need to do that when the devil tries to come against us to see if he'll take his faith. We need to say, it is written. And start speaking the word of God. Start speaking this truth. Don't be one who just, you know, um, uh, gets a lot of um, uh, teachers that you just want to hear that tickle ear. Those want, that want to just say, you know, what won't offend you. What, you know, because... A lot of people, they're preaching the word, but they're not preaching the whole word. They're just preaching the comfortable part. They don't want to preach the things that grate against the flesh. They don't want to teach the deeper things, the things that cause you to examine yourself, to cause you to repentance. They don't want to teach that. We have to flee that stuff. Stop giving heed to those types of people and start giving heed to God's word. Yes, and listen to those who are preaching the full counsel of God's word. It's true. But if you're just listening to, 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 to lies, or, th or half-truths or things that just tickle your flesh and guess what then you won't be made free you'll go around the same mountain you'll be in the same bondages and that's why a lot of people just they give up I'm talking about Christians well we shouldn't be in that place we have to not give up but we have to go forth and move into those deeper realms of glory as it says in Corinthians we are to be steadfast always abounding in the work of the Lord not to be moved or shaken but to note that that what we're doing the works that we're doing for the Lord that the Obedience that we are given unto him is not in vain We're going to be rewarded for those things. So don't so take heart. Don't be discouraged by what you see out there Don't be discouraged by what you know all the reports and things that are out there Stand upon the foundation of God's Word because that's the only truth See, there's no truth that far from God's Word. God is the truth Jesus is the truth the way and the life and when we start applying the principles of his word and we start immersing ourselves in the doctrine of Christ, meaning the doctrine of the anointed one in his anointing. Guess what? Our, your life will be changed. When things come, you'll know how to to um, uh, to do. You'll know how to take care of them. You'll know how to appropriate the promises of God, so that you won't be in that place where you just feel like you're defeated. No, you will rise above the circumstances. A lot of people are under the circumstances. No, we're not supposed to be under them. We're supposed to dominate the circumstances. We're supposed to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We're supposed to be those who are more than conquerors, more than overcomers. We were born to win, born to rule and reign, because that's who we are as believers. But it's going to take knowing the truth 
and putting into practice. Again, Jesus said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. It's the truth that you know. So really take this seriously and don't be, you know, I'm uh, sidetracked by all the false doctrine, all the bells and whistles out there in ministries and churches and, and such. Don't let those things, you know, uh, catch your attention. Let God's word catch your attention because it's his word that stands forever. That's the, 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 the scripture over this ministry that I always, always am, uh, tell you about in Isaiah 40 verse 8 is that the word of God stands forever. When everything else fails, it's what God's word won't fail. His word is a sure foundation, but we have to stand upon it. So if you are experiencing anything less than freedom, if, you, if you're experiencing bondage, and if you feel like you are, you know, you can't break free from maybe a habit or an addiction or depression or, or any type of thing, well, it's because you don't fully know this truth. Because when you fully know it, guess what? Those things are not going to be a hindrance to your life. But you can get to that place where you're free, where you are in that place of victory, when you know this truth. So don't reject it. Even if something seems like it, it um, uh, is foreign to your thinking. Well, if it's in the Word of God, then it's the truth. Now, just what people say apart from the Word of God, you have to take with a grain of salt. You have to measure everything by God's Word. See, the Word of God is the final measure. It's the final authority. And anything that doesn't line up with God's Word, like I always say, you have to throw it out like a, a tub of dirty dishwater because that's all it's worth. Throw it out. It doesn't line up with God's Word. But if it lines up with God's Word, then praise God. Receive it. Walk in it. But always measure everything you hear, everything you see, everything you read, everything that's presented to you. Measure it by God's Word because that's the standard. And if it lines up with the Word of God, then bless, then bless God, you have something to stand upon. But if it doesn't, then just, you know, disregard it. Because only the truth will set you free. And we really have to understand this. And this ministry is open to you. If you need prayer, if you need counsel, if you have questions about scriptures, then you can you can either email me at prayerfaithministry at yahoo.com or you can call me at my phone number and all the information is at my website, prayerfaithministry.com. And I'll be happy to um, uh, pray with you, counsel you, help you out with questions. So really take this seriously and know that when you have this word planted out in this, in, on the inside of your heart and you're walking in the full measure of it, then you'll be truly made free. And there ain't nothing you won't be able to conquer because it's the truth that you know that makes you free. And that's something that you can stand upon because Jesus is a sure foundation and he is the living word. And you can stand upon him and know that he will be there to carry you through everything that will try to come against you. So really take this seriously. And always remember Isaiah 40 verse 8. The word of God stands forever. Amen.